Over the past 12 months, my eBay store has shrunk from 2,800 items down to a little over 1,000 items. I've been cleaning out the crap, and after four years of selling on eBay, it's been needed. And if you've been watching this channel for a little bit now, you'll know that I've been struggling recently with the decision to wholesale my shoe category, further culling my store even more. You see, I found it really difficult to find profitable shoes, so I'm actually thinking of getting rid of the category altogether, using the money to reinvest into the categories that I can source and I know that do sell really well for me on eBay. Fast track things to last week, and I actually received a message from somebody in the local reselling community that said they were happy to go ahead and buy all of these shoes. It just came down to working out a fair price for the both of us, and in the end, I've agreed to take him up on the deal, and these shoes, all of these shoes, and now going. Oh man, this makes me really nervous. All right, so we've got, there's 129 results popping up under the six categories that I've got here for shoes. So the store size is 1,084 and my shoes make up 129 of those listings. So there's $11,486 worth of shoes that I'm trying to sell and there they all are there. But the only thing I need to be aware of is I've got this consignment with Jason going on those high-end shoes. So I've got to make sure that those shoes stay because Zane won't be getting those. But, whew, end listings. Oh man, that makes me sick. I don't think it's gonna have a great effect on my eBay store at all. That means that we only, that means for the first time in maybe two or three years, we have less than a thousand items in store. Ooh. So the value is actually probably more like 20 pairs of shoes, $800. He's probably actually got about $6,000 worth of shoes because that's only referencing 108 and I've counted up 135 pairs there. So that's that's the ballpark. He's getting six grand worth of shoes off me and I'm getting $2,000 off him, which I think is a fair deal. He's buying for a third of the price. From here, I'm a little bit nervous as to what's gonna happen for my sales because my store size now, if I go into summary, $42,325. So it was 47 and a half. So we've obviously removed that $5,200 worth of stock. So how much will that actually impact my sales? Well, we're gonna to have to find out over the next few days. I ended up going back through the store and I accounted for the 27 pairs that were missing off eBay. They were actually hiding in the sporting goods category. It was all of my footy boots. So, been able to account for every single one, 135 pairs of shoes, $6,000 worth of value. I think it's a pretty fair deal. Now, the beauty of this sale is that we've been able to pick up $2,000 worth of cash to be able to go and reinvest into categories that I wanna be selling moving forward. And that for me is media, video games and DVDs. And I also wanna look into like consoles as well. Video game consoles have done well for me and just general electronics. Those DVD VCR combo players have turned over some great money. And as you've seen recently, cameras, digital cameras, film cameras, those sorts of things. That's where I wanna put the money to try and get some really good sales coming through on my eBay store moving forward. So for the rest of this video, we're gonna go out and do a bunch of thrifting and try and spend some of this $2,000. And then we're gonna come back to the garage as well. We're gonna take you through some items that have been able to sell over the last 24 hours. Not a bad start to our thrift run, guys. I've got a Queensland Maroons State of Origin jersey here, three quarter sleeve, selling for $20. There are comps on eBay going for 100, but this one isn't a true retro version. Uh, it's just a modern revamp of the retro design. So it's not as good as it could have been, but it's still a pretty cool find. Uh, I jumped into the book section as well, which I'm actually starting to spend a bit of time in, and I found Emily Roder, uh, arguably my favorite author to try and find. Um, this one is a five series book set, and there were comps on eBay going for about $50 quite a number of comps as well. So to be able to find this in store and only pay the $5 for it was pretty damn epic. Um, I jumped into a cash converters, which isn't something I typically do, but it was a relatively slow day in the thrift. So I've just decided to mix things up a bit. I've got some graded cards that are heavily reduced from $39 down to $10. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick up this DiFincenzo card. Uh, it was going for about 46, 50 odd dollars in a PSA 10. We've got a PSA 9, so I'm thinking maybe 35 to 40. There are a few other really big high ticket value cards, as you can see here. I actually searched up every single one of these to try and find some margin, um, but I wasn't able to do it. A few other bits and pieces like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon on this side, um, but unfortunately, again, just no profit. 
Um, I've dug a little bit further. I've got down on my hands and knees and I've found some DVDs and Blu-rays, the categories that I wanna be finding. $85 here for this Neon Genesis um, DVD set, actually going for some massive dollars on eBay. We're talking about 250 bucks. So I ended up grabbing that for the $85. I also went into the DVD section and I had a bit of a look at all of these for $1 each. I'm actually surprised that there are DVDs in this cash converters because I thought a few months ago they phased out of trying to sell this category. Um, so it was kind of cool to see them back here in store. I actually was missing just one season of that 70s show. This series here goes for about $50. Uh, so even at $3 a piece, unfortunately, I wouldn't have been able to make any money off those. Uh, and then we've got Breaking Bad here as well, an ultraviolet Blu-ray copy. Again, just a $50 sale price on eBay, so I couldn't actually go ahead and grab that either. So a little bit disappointing, but the Neon Genesis was a really great buy in the DVD category in this cash converters. There was one other one, which was this here. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, the O's Cruise and Figures. It's $49. It's obviously brand new, but this little character here, second in from the right, um, it goes on its own for about $35 to $40. So you could arguably say, I'm going to go ahead and buy it just for the fact that that one is a rare figure hiding inside that box. But I ended up leaving it behind. 17th of July, just a little uh, tip for you guys. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there, but just in the bottom corner, there's a little note on the cashies tags and it's a little date code. It says 17 semicolon seven. So that's a a note to say to the seller there that uh, it's been on the shelf for quite a while. So it's a really good negotiation tactic to see what the date is. A standard customer may not know that, um, but being in the game for a little bit now, you pick up these little clues along the way and it does go ahead and help, especially with the negotiations in there. I actually tried to negotiate on the Dragon Ball Z brand new and sealed um, Blu-ray. I thought when I pulled it out of the cabinet, because it was sealed, I might have actually been able to get a little bit more money on eBay. But while he went away and worked on the best price possible for me, I did some comp research and I actually realized that what he was listing it for in store is exactly what the brand new copies were going for on eBay. So even though he was able to knock off a measly $10, um, I said no because it was just obviously no margin. So we ended up coming away with just the two, the DiVincenzo, and we've got this one here. So, you know, 40, 250, let's call it at, at best $300, and I've paid 95 bucks. So for anyone out there that says pawn shops or you know, cash converters can't make you a profit, we've just proven that it can. Welcome to paradise. DeLonghi is a good brand. Well, one, there's one listed for 200 mm. and then solds. That one went for bids. That one went for 110, but that one went for 150. We don't have any of these bits though. Mm. Like, but we do have the, the machine itself. Um, What's that on the back? Yeah, they've got that one on the back. I reckon, we, I reckon we get it. What about hair straighteners? <laughs> That's not a hair straightener. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> a wand, curling wand. Curling wand. I reckon we could probably go like... Scored anything? Oh, hello, mate. Yeah, I watch you on... Um... What's your on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. You're on right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've made it. <laughs> uh, we're just looking at this. Yeah, nice. It's a DeLonghi uh, coffee yeah. maker, but it, yeah. it, there were some good comps on eBay. I so there's some profit on that. I think, well, it's $50 in here, but I reckon we might be able to. Nice. Um, what was your name? I'm Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. What do you got there? I'm from New Zealand. New Zealand, nice. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm on, um, oh, with my family on holiday. Nice. So. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You found much stuff? Oh, I'm going for the DVDs. Good man. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. where you find them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Kate, my girlfriend. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, you got a good run around here because there's yeah. four of them there. Yeah. You got this one here. I was scoping it out, eh? So yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a good little pocket. I'll come here once a week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you find some good stuff. But yeah, we'll give this a bit of a go. Cool. See how it goes. Sweet, man. Unreal, yeah. mate. Good right. to meet you. Yeah. Unreal. So I always look um, with books, I always look for this. Like it says number two, three, and four there. Mm -hmm. But then there'll be potentially some somewhere else. Number one, hopefully, is hidden somewhere. Um, this is Gail Carragher. And look, there's actually more Gail Car Carragher here. That says three, four, and five. So that might be a different series, but it's the same author. Yeah. Um, I think that's $2. Yeah, $2 a book. 
Also, too, it came in on the 4th of September. We're in October now, aren't we? That was a while ago. Um, this one's $4. But... I've also found... Of course. Sure. Um, three more from her, too. So there's book number one. Number two and number one, but that's the series of the parasol. Mm. That one goes with this, these ones. One, two, three, four. So yeah, book one, there it is. So there's one, two, three, four, and then there's this series. One, two, three, four, five. Epic. So you could even potentially do that as one big lot. I've just got to work out if it's worth it for the price that they're selling it for. The parasol, 79. Oh. Even if I type in the parasol. That's this set. So it's just those two. So there's a 70 and an 80 on just that, which is quite good. But then I like these because these are hard covers. I think it's like this. Because uh, I think that's more the cover. No, maybe not. Or well, maybe it's these. Yeah. That one. Six dollars a book, but these are priced at four, mm. four dollars. These are paperbacks, so you've got four, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen dollars. So I think we'll just do this set here because there's comps on eBay. Fourteen into about seventy probably. Um, shipment on that will probably cost about maybe fifteen to twenty. So there's still going to be some really good profit in that. But based on we can't really find too much information, we're going to leave this behind. But as you can see there, out of a wall of books, that's how we go ahead and we break it down. Has been tagged on Tuesday, but just in case, keep the receipt. No stress. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Thank Thanks you. for your help. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a lovely day. You too. So the trick of this one is, I really love the fact that it said the second. Oh, it actually said the second of the ninth. Oh, what? No, a month ago. Oh, I think I did that as a mistake. But he said, though, that it had only just come out. He said I just tested it yesterday. So it must have been sitting in the store, but they hadn't got to testing it. Um, but I really do think that that'll go for 150 So 150 plus, what are we going to say, 70 on that. Yeah. 220 and we've spent 64 I used to do big thrift hauls where I'd go out and I'd buy 20 items for $60. Um, the game's changed. It's all about spending up on items that you know you're going to make a better average sale price on. And DeLonghi is such a good brand in the coffee store. You used to be a barista, didn't you? So you would know that that one's an awesome find. It's a good find. I'm just pulling out some good shows here. So we've got CSI New York, two, three, and four. If we could find season one, That'd be good, potentially. And then we've also got these. So it's Law and Order SVU, but we've got 12, 14, and two 17s. So I think that's actually good because it's a later season. Then there's this one, SVU, the second year. So that's a season two. If you found all like 20 seasons of this show, I think it goes for like $180, $200. But I think this one's the best that we've got so far. So you can have a look and see if there are any more. So you can see 1 to 9 goes for over 100. But we've only got a 1 to 4. There's a 1 to 4. Only went for 27, but then 6 and 7 went for 24. And I think because these are a dollar a disc, that's going to be literally what it costs on eBay. Mm. But as you can see, if you found a full set, it's over $100. Yeah. I feel like somebody's made this. Like stitched it themselves. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Step Brothers, Dale Bareback. Is Bareback the last name of those guys on that show? Dale is on They're the show. Different brothers. 
It's Shark Week. <laughs> Dr. Seuss books, the classic collection, Oh, the Places You'll Go. All of those there for $20, which I think is pretty good. But we've also got these Dr. Seuss books, which I think are a little, oh, the classic collection. So you can even add them to the bundle. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. So nine plus Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. So there's thirty-three. Thirty-three Dr. Seuss. I actually don't think there's enough value in them. See, that's even at fifty, sixty dollars. That's it. That's a lot of eleven going for fifty. But we're gonna have to buy all of this and then ship it, and there's twenty-five there. So 25 into 50 with that much of shipment. I don't think we can buy that. That's a really good book series. It's only book three, so we won't do it, but the 39 clues, if you had all of those, sells for a lot. He's pretty cool. What's it say? It's $5, $8. Do you know who it is? No. Um, Jerry, I think? Jerry, out of um, Tom, and Jerry? Tom and Jerry. Is it Tom? Tom. Tom's the cat. Yeah, Tom's the cat. That is definitely him though, hey? I, think so. I wonder what a big Jerry plush is worth. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sitting on uh, 220 from that first store with those two items and we need 500, so we, need, we still need $280 and I won't be able to go home until I find it. Just sold, um, I just sold that Emily Roder book set. Um, we got $50 for the Emily Roder book set. So that'll cost $8.50 to ship off because there's only five books. And as you guys know, we only paid $5 for it. So five into 50 with an 850 shipment, 1350, fees of 750, that's $21. We're gonna profit 29 bucks. Things did start to get a little bit slow in the thrift though, so much so that I was actually starting to worry that we wouldn't find our $500 worth of listing value for the day. So I actually turned to Facebook Marketplace and I found an item that was listed up for $175, but I negotiated it down to 150 and I can sell it on eBay for 280, hitting our quota for the day. All right, a lunchtime swoop. This was an awesome find guys. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, $175. I have gone again and uh, nabbed it for 150. There it is there. We have a vintage Illawarra Steelers, New South Wales Rugby League, basically long sleeve or maybe three quarter sleeve jersey. Now these vintage Rugby League jerseys go for a ton of money. Um, I think we're gonna be able to get upwards of $300 for this, certainly 250 without a doubt. So 250 to 300, coming off about 150 worth of a purchase. I think we should be able to make ourselves anything between 70 to $100 in true profit. It also helps us out on a slow thrift day. That's why I just thought I'd go ahead and do it um, because you know we're only up to $220. Um, so I'm going to list this up for say 280 and that's going to be the $500 for the day worth of listings that we need. Um, we've also got this here as well, which is a vintage Steelers scarf too. So I'm not sure what these go for. He said when I was talking to him on Facebook um, that he would have a look around the house to try and find the scarf and he did. So that's just a bit of a bonus. Will I go ahead and list it together? Probably not. I think I'm going to do separate listings, um, but I might be able to get about 30 odd dollars for this as well. Not bad for a bit of a throw in. So that was pretty epic. I did go to the two thrift stores and I did go to the cash converters. Unfortunately, we were empty handed. Uh, so I'm gonna get back home, list up what is now only three items for the day, but it does get me my 500 bucks, which is really cool. Morning, Perry. I'm just gonna watch in there. <laughs> He's so good. Um, an update on the shoes. While they are still here in the garage, they have absolutely sold and I received the $2,000 into my bank account. So it is officially not mine. Um, this is all gonna be collected on Sunday. We're gonna make a video on Sunday at the flea market and then Zane who's bought these shoes is gonna come around and collect them uh, straight afterwards. So by Sunday morning, this will all be empty and we're gonna have a lot more room basically to try and fill up this space. So I'm thinking video games and DVDs moving forward, a bunch of media, but 135 pairs of shoes out of here.
for two grand. It's six thousand dollars worth of value. Four thousand dollars after fees and post. So Zane's got a chance to double his money, and I get the two thousand dollars that I originally invested into the shoes back. So I think it's a pretty fair deal. It's nice to have the money in the pocket. We can now go again. If we have a look at this over here, this is the update for the month of October, fresh month, my first month doing this solo. We're now two and a half days in and we've had a really quite crazy start to the month. So hopefully this can continue. Uh, we've had a $515 day, a $485 day, and then a $239 day so far today. Um, and we're sitting at 9 a.m. So to have already been halfway towards another $500 day by 9 a.m., hopefully we can get a few more sales today to get three days in a row. It puts us on $1,241. So we're basically averaging 500 bucks, which is epic, um, especially when we don't have any employees to have to pay for now. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna take you through what is 10 sales that I need to put into the post today to get us up to date. Um, and the first ones I've got for you are right here. I won't harp on these for too long. They've just come out of this shelf here. Uh, we've got a SNES game right there. Um, and then we've also got this game on the PS4. Um, both have sold very, very cheaply. This one's only gone for $15, uh, a super cheap game, and then this one has sold for $20. So I'm actually going to put this one into a small satchel. I'm just going to put a bunch, a bunch of bubble wrap around that. This will go into an envelope, uh, and they'll both ship off for a very, very low profit. But a couple more video games. You're probably thinking, why is this so, um, sold so cheap, considering we've got a uh, $20 plus average sale price. Um, this one here is sold on a best offer which is why it went for a little under the $20 minimum that we have. Now, I do speak about this one quite a bit. Um, Harry Potter. We've got a set of Harry Potter DVDs right here that have gone on to sell. Now, if you can find these, you typically actually find Harry Potter DVDs in thrift stores for about a dollar a piece. When you're looking at movies, movies are a whole lot less than TV shows in most thrift stores. Um, so I'm always tending to pick these ones up whenever I see them. They have probably fallen down a little bit in true value. Um, but I picked this up for $8 in a thrift store, a dollar a piece, and these have sold for $32. But uh, a couple of months, even a couple of years ago, these would sell for about $40 very, very consistently. Um, so they have fallen a little bit in value, I think maybe because people are cluing on and they're starting to sell them themselves. Uh, but still $32, often $8 purchase, putting them into a medium satchel. There's probably just, maybe, I'd have to look at the numbers, just enough margin to make it still worthwhile. Um, although, given it a few more months, and it probably won't be. Now, this one we bought yesterday. You guys have just watched it in today's video. Um, Dante DiVincenzo plays for the New York Knicks, Kate. Very, very good basketball player, Dante. Um, this is a PSA 9, uh, so it's not in pristine condition, but it is PSA graded. In the grading process, these cost about $20 to $30 um, to simply just get graded. So just because I saw PSA, um, I knew that there was going to be at least a little more value than the $10 that we bought this for. Um, now, this one hasn't actually been paid for yet, but I am very confident to put it into the what sold because I spoke to the buyer and he said that he was buying this tomorrow. He's going to be making his payment. So I know we spoke in the last vlog about people that aren't paying for their, their items and they're just waiting and just sitting forever. Um, well, this buyer said to me, he goes, I will definitely be paying for this tomorrow because it's his birthday. And he's bought this as a birthday present for himself. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so we got a $33 sale price for Dante. Here's another really fast sale. Listed this up yesterday as well. I've got a broken tub here. I need to swap this tub. Have a look at that. It's just split all the way down. Too many clothes, not enough tubs. Um, this one here, we've got a Nike dry fit pair of tracksuit pants. They are a size large. Uh, they're in excellent condition. They've got the sleeve um, zip up the lower leg around the ankle. Um, do you, would you ever wear a pair of tracksuit pants loose like that? No. And just like have them flopping around? <laughs> no. I've never thought about doing that. I think in high school we did. Was that a thing in high school? Mm -hmm. Maybe because of like when you wore bigger shoes. I don't know. Uh, to me, that just seems a silly feature on a pair of tracksuit pants. I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, anyway, they've sold. 11, uh, size, size large and they've sold for... $34.95 and we paid $6 in a thrift store and I listed them up yesterday. Um, did a lot of pricing research with this one. I will say with the clothing, I think you've got to be even more strategic with price points because it is such a saturated market. Like there are so many Nike tracksuit pants out there. Why is this selling in three hours when it's a very generic 
pair of plain black tracksuit pants. Reason is, is because I spent an extra five minutes looking at the price points and I looked to see where I would sit if I listed it up for a certain price based on the current active listings. And then I had to look at the sales comparison as well to see what price points they're actually selling for. So it meant that this worked out to be about a $34.95 sale price and we got the full asking price as well, no best offers. Um, but this is sold, whereas I think somebody else might list it up for $40, $45.50 and then it's going to sit for three to four months because it's just slightly too highly priced. Um, so really, really important to just spend the time to look at your price points and you can move bread and butter items like this a whole lot quicker. Are you a fan of Spider-Man, Kate? No. No? <laughs> Neither am I. Um, but we have had a collection go to, I dare say, a Spider-Man fan out there. Um, all of these comic books, here we go here, we've got six of them. Six The Amazing Spider-Man comic books, all Marvel, all from the same collection, I believe. Number 29, 24, 30, 28, 26, 27. So it's a bit of a running set there. Um, these have come through and sold for $28. Now, I have a big collection of comic books. I know I've got a lot of tubs here, uh, boxes here, but I've got a bunch of old comic books here. There it is all there. This is where this allocation of Spider-Man comic books have come from. This was all picked up at a cash converters. Um, a really cheap purchase price at a cash converters. I think I paid about 50 cents for each comic book. I think it was like $300 all up that I spent. Um, and these are sort of the dregs that are left over that aren't worth too much. Uh, so to get 28 bucks for this after buying it maybe over a year ago now, um, it's not probably something I'd recommend that you guys go and thrift, um, but it was nice to see it at least go because it means that I get to get it out of the house and I'm not going to be trying to source these again, I wouldn't have thought. Um, he has also bought this as well, Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home on DVD. Brand new and sealed. I think we got $15 for that one as well. A pretty cheap priced DVD, but when you add the two together, we can put that into a small satchel. We got a $43 total value for it, which was quite good. I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, uh, cardboard on top there, and I'm gonna put some cardboard on the bottom, and I'm gonna tape that up just to stop that getting bent in shipment. It's going into a satchel, so I just need to make sure that gets reinforced with some cardboard. And then this one, I'm probably just gonna put on top of the cardboard, and then I'm gonna wrap them both up with bubble wrap, and then slide it into a small satchel. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's the way I'm gonna tackle this one. Uh, a multi-order for $43 that'll ship off for just $8.50. Another DVD box set here. This is the complete series set, the final season part two, yeah. Mad Men, Don Draper. I have watched every single one of these uh, episodes. This is a really good TV show for any of you guys that haven't seen it. Um, this one was a $45 sale price, so it's not like a crazy sale in the sense of not hitting our $10 minimum per season. Two, four, six, eight different DVDs there for $45. So that'll go into a medium satchel. Um, I definitely think if you found the entirety like we have here, selling it for $45 is pretty good. However, if you are buying them for $2 a piece in a thrift store, that's $16. 16 into 45 may not be that worth it. But if you're picking them up in a big bulk buy somewhere or if you're finding $1 DVD TV seasons, I think eight into 45 is definitely worthwhile. So a bit of bubble wrap, medium satchel, a very quick and easy sale. Model number NVSD. 220A. We've got a VCR player here, Panasonic VCR player. These were selling for about 100, 120 odd dollars. Um, I bought this at the flea market for 20 bucks. I did plug it in. I plugged it into the PowerPoint literally just down here and it all lit up completely fine. I put a VCR into it, didn't chew up the VCR uh, tape either. So I went ahead and I listed it up for $85. There was a bit of a rattle, which I actually had on camera. I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear that there. It's some loose piece, but I don't think it's actually stopping the, the playback of this thing. Um, somebody will be able to get in there and take it out if they need to, but if there are any issues, um, this is a return policy that I'm obviously more than happy to accept. Um, if there were any issues once they truly got it and used it for playback, um, they could send a return back and that won't be a problem for me to give them a full refund. But I'm gonna do a lot of bubble wrap around this. I'm gonna sturdy a sturdy box. I've got a ton of different boxes. I'm thinking this box here this roundup box might be perfect um, to put it into that. But uh, yeah, shipment on these things is usually about $20. So $20 purchase, $20 shipments, 40 bucks. Selling it for 85 after fees, probably gonna make about 30 odd dollars, 25 to 30 bucks in profit. However, 
you can get about $100, $120 on these and then that would turn the profit into about 50. So I think these electronic items are really, really worthwhile getting, especially if you can get the remotes along with them like we've got with this one. So only took about two weeks to sell. Um, pretty good one. Now, this is all that remains for our camera gear. There's actually not a lot left over, to be honest with you. I've got a couple of different cameras here. I've got one more there. We've got some lenses down here as well, and then some film and accessories. I showed this in the last video. This was a camera buyout that I made off a viewer of the channel by the name of Diana. Um, really lovely lady. She set up the deal for me perfectly, gave me everything that I needed on a platter, and I've literally just been going off and selling these things one by one, and I only bought them on Friday. Today's Wednesday, and I would argue that half of what we sourced has already sold for over thousands of dollars, to be honest with you. That's why these numbers are doing so well. The camera niche is just such a good one to be in. Um, she gave this to me as well. This was a fourth generation iPad. She said, let's do this one on consignment. Um, I think because she thought that it was about $450 to $500 worth of value. Um, the Apple iPad fourth generation Air, which is a modern iPad, that sells for four to 500. This one though is the actual like old school iPad uh, and it's not worth as much. So I did some research, I spoke to Diana on the phone just via a text message and I told her that this thing's actually more so worth about $100. Uh, so I listed it up on Friday and we are still doing consignment on this but it sold for $90 on a best offer. Um, so she's gonna make an extra 40 to $50 which is super fair because she, we only bought everything for 300 to begin with. So she probably deserves a few more dollars. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give her a bit of money for this, put it into a, probably a box. It's, it can't, it has to go into a box, doesn't it? Something like that. Um, but a lot of bubble wrap, a thin box. I'll try and source one um, here in the garage. But that is a perfect example of an item that a lot of people have got lying around the house. They've got these and $90 worth of a sale price for something you've got lying around the house is what a lot of people probably don't assume is worth any money. So I recommend you guys getting it. Kate was just really worried about being seen in the, uh, in the screen of the iPad, so we can't reveal her in an iPad screen. Delete we? it. No, no, we'll see, what, we'll see what the footage played back, but I don't think you would have been in it. That was pretty funny though. I was wondering what you were doing. Um, this is the number one sale, guys. We have a really cool set of Harry Potter books. Um, a lot of these are actually hard covered as well, which is great. Found these in an off shop for $3 each. Um, so we're about 20 bucks in on this deal. Um, if you can find the, like that's an awesome book, right? That's the very first ever book, um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone as a hardcover. I don't really come across that hardcover of that first book too often. Um, there are three of these that are also first edition. So these are certain things that cause the value of the book series to go up. You wanna be finding hardcovers, you wanna be finding first editions, and we have quite a large assortment of all of that uh, in this collection. Therefore, we went ahead and priced this one up quite high, and we got a sale price of $149. So this one was sourced maybe, maybe a month to six weeks ago, um, and 149 was pretty fair based on the comps for first editions and hardcovers. Um, so we're gonna put this one into a box, it's gonna be about 15 to $20 to ship off, um, but buying it for 20, shipping it for 20, selling it for 150. We've done it a lot in these video guys. You've seen a lot of Harry Potter stuff sell, especially books. Um, so it is one to add to the list, no matter what you sell on eBay. Kate literally just saved. You saved it just then. I was about to ship that off. You're as welcome. Um, we've got two Deathly Hallow hard covers. There's one right there and there's one right here. I think that one is the original with the little sticker tag, but this one's a cleaner copy. Um, but that's part of another listing. This is the one that we're missing, Chamber of Secrets. So I'm gonna put that there. And now we're not gonna have any issues from the buyer receiving two of the same book and missing the Chamber of Secrets. Perry, what should the viewers go and watch next? Sorry, did I wake you? Sorry, mate. Hey, can you tell the viewers what to watch? Say, so this one, this one over here. Go watch this one. From Perry, to me, to you, thanks for watching, see you soon.